welcome to Six Figs. I'm Kyle. We're going over with a fine tooth comb, everything that's going on within the Definity ecosystem. So buckle up, Buttercup. I had a little tweet inspiration, folks. ICP Whale, follow them at ICP underscore Whale. Tell them Six Figs sent you. But he dropped a tweet. Dominic Williams will appear on the front cover of Time Magazine sooner than we all think, folks. And guess what I did? I struck while the iron was hot. Ding. Now, I threw down this tweet. I have just nominated Dominic. I got to get this out of my system. Woo -hoo -hoo. The one and only folks, Dominic Williams. Woo -hoo. You guys can tell that I'm training to be that ring announcer, right? So I have just nominated Dominic W as person of the year. Person of the year. Does the ICP community agree? Y'all showed up in force. And I thought that this was funny as hell. I built the blockchain that goes vroom, vroom. Now on to what's going on within the European game of internet computer, because this is very important. And this perhaps is a great example of blockchain regulating itself and voluntarily being compliant with Regulator practices and laws. I'm really impressed by this. Devs now have access to tools on the internet computer to release dApps in the European market that protect personal and financial data under stringent regulator practices. Now they threw a link down to TechU or TechEU. Game changing subnet launches on the internet computer to help devs build GDPR compliant dApps. And so basically this is like one big subnet. So think of this as one big subnet. And basically what is going on here is there are nodes within this subnet that will basically allow um, this compliance. So uh, these nodes are told commands to basically allow you know, compliance within uh, these these practices. So this is interest interesting read, and I will just throw a link to it, but uh, basically here's the way it works. On the internet computer, a network, a subnet, operates as a collection of nodes that runs in the same computation, hold the same data, and are set in the same state. The European subnet is the first subnet of its kind on the internet computer and is geographically bounded, meaning that all the nodes in the subnet are located within the EU. And that's kind of what I figured out. Uh, so this basically ensures that data is processed and stored within the EU to align with the GDPR's judicial requirements. So I thought that was cool. But the one cool thing about this, folks, is that... This was voted on by people in the NNS. And you don't need to have an NNS wallet or anything like that. But you can just go to the NNS. I'll link this in the description. Uh, but you can basically uh, make proposals here. You can vote on things. You can just see what's going on if you're just curious to see what kind of things they're uh, voting on to add or remove data centers, things like that. Just maintenance stuff. Sometimes it's controversial stuff. There is something called developer grants within Definity. So if you are a developer watching this video, you can get a grant. Possibly fairly easy if you know your stuff. If you have a plan that you can show Definity and execute on it, they will give you a grant. Some of these grants run up to 100000 uh, dollars worth. So there's some interesting grants that have just been approved. Now B4B World is a Web3 native influencer ad network that connects advertisers with influencers. Pretty cool. I could use something like that. I could connect to some of these um, advertisers out there. They could connect to me a lot easier. Uh, Job Grader, which is a uh, provides AI companies with exclusive access to verified user-only platform uh, that ensures data quality. Because guess what? There's a lot, a lot of data being provided to companies that are paying for it that are just the result of bot action, things like that. Uh, DataPond is set to transform into a transparent center 
for a data exchange and an AI data management gateway, catering to both blockchain to blockchain and consumer data needs. I'm pretty sure that's what B2B stands for. Interesting stuff. They all got grants, folks. Now let's check out the crypto bubbles here, folks. And you know, this is getting interesting. It's getting very interesting. You guys can see that the markets are kind of a mixed bag right now. And I'm going to just go ahead here and refresh this because I messed it all up. Uh, but we're seeing some coins on here pumping. SEI, VET, Sticks. I just called that Sticks. It's probably not Sticks. Uh, but you guys get the drift, right? Uh, so with that said, where is the IC on here? Well, we're down 3.9% on the day, maintaining a 19 market cap rank. That's huge. ICP was just chilling down around the 35 to 38 range just a couple days ago. This thing made a monster move. 170 plus percent on the year. 87 percent on the week, folks. So I can handle this. I really can. And guess what? In the last video that I dropped for all of you, all of you folks, out of the kindness of my heart, I do this. That's why I need you guys to subscribe and I need you guys to hit that like button so we can spread the word about Definity because the more momentum this video gets, the more people it reaches, the fatter your bags get, right? So last live stream I did, and that's another reason why you need to subscribe, folks. The last live stream I did, I'm telling people we could have Elliott Wave Theory here. And I was calling for somewhat of a pullback a little bit. And we're looking at the eight hour chart here, and we're gonna pull up the weekly chart for a historical view, folks, this is glorious. And I'm gonna show you guys this in just a second. But on this eight hour chart, I do think that we might see ICP, and this might not happen until the 23rd, the 28th, somewhere in there of December. But I do think that we are going to see a little bit of giveth possibly down to around this 50 moving average. And then I think it's possible that we might be seeing this thing ready to rip off again. Uh, and if we do, I would expect ICP, if this follows true Elliott wave theory pattern, you know, we need to, we need to get above this $11.83-ish range, but it would be great to see like this $12.50 level. So we're going to get rid of this, and we're just going to look at what the $12.50 level looks like uh, via Gone Fan, folks. And it's very important that anybody you are watching does TA at a high level. Um, I, I pride myself on, on, on doing technical analysis at an extremely high level. So you'll see calls sometimes on this channel where I'll tell you to watch out down to the hour two weeks out from now and we'll see increased volatility or just some crazy stuff pumping. Um, so with, right now with that said, uh, if we do get another, if we do get a little retracement here, folks, I think, I think we might be getting ready to see something really nice to really digest and see what kind of trend lines and resistance and support levels we're looking at, I'm going to rely on something called the Gone Fans, folks. And the Gone Fans are very important to me, and we are just going to uh, put these up very quickly. I promise you it won't take more than five more seconds. So markets, folks, typically move. At a 45 degree angle, you start drawing, I shouldn't say typically, but a lot of times markets will move at a 45 degree angle. And that happened to be one of Gon's uh, thoughts. In Before I even read about Gon's work, um, that was my consensus on that topic. And so it was like crazy to me to hear somebody else, of course, gone is long gone, but you know we shared the same uh, sentiment uh, in a completely, completely uh, different uh, period of time. 
Uh, so, you know, I, I think that there is some, some reason to believe that we might just see this price flag out into what's called a bull flag or a bull pennant. So basically you've got a bull flag bull like that, and this would be a pennant formation. And this would really, really kind of jive with what I was just telling you on the eight hour chart. We're now on the, on the daily, but you could kind of see where I'm talking about price action maybe squeezing into and bouncing off this trend line. So I do think by, you know, sometime late, late this year, I'm talking like the last week of December, we could see ICP start ripping again. And if this thing starts ripping again, folks, I'm looking at gone fans, uh, support and resistance levels all the way from $23 uh, you know, and up to possibly, possibly $28 around. Now, don't take this as financial or trading advice, please. Uh, but what I'm looking at here is interesting stuff. So, I mean, if we, let's just say we stall halfway through, there's also a very interesting thing that could happen here. Um, really, if we saw a price maybe pump up here, uh, we could be setting up for what is called an ascending triangle as well. So uh, there's lots of things to be bullish about. And then we're going to check out the weekly chart here. But I want to just show you guys something that I'm extremely bullish about. And that's very present on the daily and weekly charts. It's, it's just crazy. Uh, this is more than a multi-year, more than a multi-year pattern. And we'll just confirm that claim in a second. Uh, but with that said, you guys can see where I'm going with this. So if we get that bounce, I mean, we may get something like this to occur. Uh, it'd be interesting to see. Now, the reason I put this right shoulder right here is because we have two support, or excuse me, uh, two levels of resistance in previous times. Uh, so that makes sense to me to put this level here because this would probably be a great level of support right around this $10 range, right about where we're at right now. So, um, you know, we're kind of looking at that. But onto this historic, historic um, stuff going on with ICP, especially on the weekly. I am in love with Japan, as all of you know. I love Japan. I actually had a dream that I was in Japan. I love the Japanese people. I love the culture, uh, the food, everything. And I can't wait to go back and spend like a month there. Uh, but with that said, I use Japanese Ichimoku Cloud Trading. I've been using this, folks, for years and years and years, longer than probably some of you have been alive. And the interesting thing about the Ichimoku cloud, especially like on the weekly timeframes, and we'll just pull up Bitcoin here, not that I'm shilling you Bitcoin, but simply because uh, Bitcoin, we're gonna have to, uh, let's look at the ETH charts. Let's look at the good old dirty gas fee ETH. Okay, so I'm gonna have to look at, we'll just go back to Bitcoin and we will look at, uh, 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 uh. let's look at the Coinbase exchange. And what you guys can see, and here's some more TA that I did uh, a while back. I was kind of calculating out the floor of where Bitcoin would, would line up. It's been a long time since I've seen this. But you can see that once price action gets above this Ichimoku cloud, what happens to assets? Well, they go on these rampages, folks. And that's what I'm hoping we see happen with ICP. And it's the first time that this thing is cooking above the Ichimoku cloud. This is a big deal. So with that said, folks, I mean, right now, uh, I am very, you know, again, this is not financial or trading advice, but I'm, I'm very bullish on this project. I'm very bullish that we've seen this thing go on absolute benders uh, to the upside. Yeah, it's been crazy, absolutely crazy. Um, so, I mean, with that said, folks, I've got a video for you guys that I want to check out, want you to check out, and I'm going to leave it at the end screen, especially if you are a Wojak fan. I'm a Wojak animator. Some of you might not have known that, and I will leave a link 
to one of my latest Wojak videos. I think it's funny. Dark humor, crypto, like, it just goes hand in hand. So, I love you all. We'll see you guys on the next video. Peace. Yeah.